Okay, the first thing I want to do before I install pistons is I want to make sure that the crankshaft is at bottom dead center. See, I'm turning it. What I'm doing is I'm winding the crankshaft up with the bore. When I put the piston in, it's going to come straight in all the way to the bottom. So here's the gaps again. The arrow on this particular piston means that it goes forward. You also have to pay attention to that because the connecting rod could be in wrong. You have to check that every time. Make sure there it's going to be something like the, the tangs on the bearings go to one side and the arrow goes towards the front of the engine. Notice how I'm not on any 90 degree axis right here. So there's one gap. There's a second gap. And the third gap is right there. So now this piston is ready to install. So the first thing we do is we find the bore size, which is point, sorry, 4.055. So that should hit the range. Notice the bottom. That goes to the bottom of the piston not the top. So we're gonna put it on here. The This is a universal ring compressor. The angled side always goes to the bottom. This is important because this side is sh smaller than this side. Pay attention to that. We're gonna put it on here. Also notice the piston cooling nozzles. One's going to go here, so looking at this, see how that's kind of square cut versus this side where it's chamfered. The chamfered side goes away from the other connecting rod. On a V8, that means the chamfered edge goes away from the adjacent connecting rod. Also note the arrow, so that goes to the top of the engine. Make sure that your rings are not lined up. Uh, like I showed earlier, you want to make sure that one is 180 degrees from one, and then the oil control is also 90 degrees from either one of the top two rings. Failure to do that will cause high blow-by issues, high oil consumption, a lot of different things. When I put the ring compressor on, I'm going to make sure that the bottom, which is right here, towards the rod end, is towards the rod end, and then the 90 degree end of the pliers is towards the rod end. Big thing I want to make sure of is this gap right here. I don't want to close the ring compressor on that because that's a good way to break ring. So what I'll do is I will squeeze that down Sometimes you have to lock that, and if it's assembled right, it should turn. Before I install it, I'm going to loosen this up, and I'm going to lubricate it really well. The more oil, the better. I'm going to pour oil pretty much everywhere. I want that to be nice and lubricated before I even think about putting the piston in. Once that's done, I'm going to tighten this down, make sure it's locked. I'm going to push the rod bearings out, put new ones in. I'll clean that up first. Make sure you don't get these on backwards. And typically, the tang always goes to the tang. See the tang right there? There's nothing on this side. And these are cracked rods, which essentially means that they break them at the factory and they're a lot stronger. If you take some scotch Brite to this, just make sure it's totally clean. You want the back side of the bearing to be totally clean only oil you want on it is on the friction side. When you handle the bearing, you don't ever want to touch there. You always want to handle them from the back. Notice there's a tang right there. That's going to go in there. We'll push it back and forth just to make sure it seats. And I'm going to do the same thing with the cap. It's right there. 
Back and forth until it's centered. And you see here's a chamfered edge versus a non-chamfered edge. That basically means that the tang there goes with the tang there. Also going to use new bolts on this one because they're one-use bolts. I, I like this uh, 105 lubricant. Put a bead belt like that on there. Same on the connecting rod. That'll look about like this. Only bad part about this is it, it's high in zinc. It's really slippery. You have to change oil shortly after that. Got an oil rag dipped in oil. Dump it in, wipe it in. I kind of hate using rags because there's a lot of fibers, but I've got some lint free rags here. You can use a dead blow like this. The arrow needs to go to the top of the engine. I'm gonna put him in here like so. The big thing is you want to kind of go in in one shot. Sometimes you got to squeeze the pliers. If it stops, sometimes it will break the ring. Yeah, I've got an Allen wrench here to kind of help guide it. I don't want to hit the crankshaft. Push that up against the crank. And then I'm going to put the cap on. Okay, it's most important. Notice the chamfer versus not. The chamfer goes towards the crank. Also notice there's a one here and a one there. I'm going to put those together. Notice I lubed that. Put that together. They will not go together the wrong way. I'm going to use the lube that they're calling for. The big important part is you put a little bit on the threads and the most important part is under the head, like so. Same thing with the next one, like this, right underneath the head. Doesn't take a lot, but your torque value will change a bunch. If you're not believing me on that, there's a torque video on the internet for, with uh, dry versus wet bolts that will change your mind. All right, so I've run these down hand tight. They torque to 95 foot-pounds. Typically, you want to torque the tang side first. I'm going to kind of run them down evenly. Torque wrench is set to 95. Then I'm going to go to this one. And then I'm going to recheck just as I can. But there again, that, that whole how you lube the bolt, where you lube the bolt, that kind of stuff, that makes a huge difference in how this stuff torques down. Here's the other thing. Once you're done torquing, see how that moves side to side? That's kind of a double check to make sure you didn't pinch something. The rest of the connecting rods and pistons go in pretty much the same way. Just make sure you got side play, make sure you lube it. You can kind of see here that the crankshaft throw is at bottom dead center. If you have some sort of guiding mechanism that would help you guide the connecting rod up and down so it doesn't ding the crankshaft, that's something else you want to also think about. Gonna just make sure. You don't want to force it in because it'll break a ring. As you're going in, make sure you're not hitting the crank. If you can see here, I put the second connecting rod in and I'm going to tap it up until it's flush. I'm going to put my hand on the piston to hold it and then you can also push on the edge of the bearing back and forth. One thing that does is make sure it's centered. Then I'm going to put my cap on. Notice the chamfered side goes towards the crank cheek and the flat side goes towards the other connecting rod. Also make sure your tangs are lined up. There's also numbers on the end of these. I'm going to loop here and here. A little bit on the threads like that. Run it all the way down. You would do that by hand just to make sure that something's not misaligned. My tang side is this side. If you had the 
crank at top dead center makes it really hard to, to kind of run them down fairly even. These particular ones are at 95 foot pounds. Another way you can tell which one's number one versus two is your number one cylinder on American engines is going to be in the front. Also after I'm done checking to make sure I have side play. It turns over nice and easy. So I got side play there and I have side play there. So that one's installed correctly. 